Okay, I, I would love your feedback on this. One of the things is that so often you're told, write down 100 names, start calling them, invite them to your first party, sit down and talk to your family and friends about your product, but so seldom do they tell you how to talk to your friends and family about the product. Is that agreed? Yep. So true. Okay. I'm going to change that culture. I'm determined. Okay. Because this is what happens is that you get all excited. You got your kit, you got your new product. You're thinking about the product. You're thinking about the income opportunities. You're thinking, you know, this upline told you like I met a gal the other day. So sweet. She was so sweet, really sweet. Um, but she does the direct sales company with the cards. They just send out cards send out cards. Okay. And she's, she was new to it. And she goes, I'm like, well, what's your business, your goals with your business, which is something, you know, I ask people all the time. Right. She goes, Oh, well you can easily make $30,000 of this a month. And she kept saying this and it, you know, if you can, great. I mean, I wasn't, I had no problem with her saying something that was a big dream because you know, I'm all into dreaming big. And I said, well, okay. So tell me a little bit about the specific, like how many people you have to talk to or, how much business you have to do a month to have that happen. You know, based on where you are now, what do you need to do next? Oh, well, I'm, I'm just new to it. I'm not really sure. Tim, she wants to know the numbers. And I said, no, I don't want to know the numbers for me. I want to know if you know your numbers. I want to know if you know what it takes to get to your goal. That's what I want to know. And anyway, I, and I just, my heart was just broken because she was talking at me 50 miles an hour and you're going to get a card versus another bill in the mail. And you know, and she's passionate about this product and she's passionate about changing lives and she's passionate about being able to make more money. And there was some service work she wanted to do in another country. And you know, she had like these, these goals back here, but she had no idea how to talk to people. She had no idea how to ask questions. She had no idea what it was going to take to accomplish that goal. And I was just like, Oh, man, this is so sad for people. It just breaks my heart because they get this big idea and some of them don't buy it. You know, they don't bite that big fish. But anyway, it was just heartbreaking because I could see what, you know, there was potential there, but she was talking at me. So I talked to her for a while and finally decided to move on and that I would call her later and talk to her about my program. But the guy... I'm sorry, I'm kind of going off on a tangent a little bit here. But anyway, I, I've got to find a better way to say this. So the other gentleman, he, anyway, I, I was like a booth and a half away. And I hear this, well, what do you do? And I'm like, are they talking to me? And, and I kind of turned around, well, yeah, what do you do? And so I walked back and I said, well, I actually teach people how to ask really good questions so you can sell more of what you have. <laughs> <laughs> at me, at me, at me, at me, at me. Never ask a single question. You know, do you send out thank you cards now? You know, how many Christmas cards do you send? To, you know, what what kind of cards would you like to be sending more frequently? I mean, like I could have sold that product. Like, ah, you know, I was like, ah. And he goes, I said, he goes, oh, really? I said, yeah, I do a little bit of training on sales and goal setting, and have a book I wrote. Oh, my book's being published at Thanksgiving, and he went off about his book. I started talking about him again. And I was just like, this is so sad. It doesn't have to be this way. <laughs> I was just like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. But my point is I really, really, really want to help team members teach their new recruits how to talk to their friends and family. Because when you get started with a company and you have kind of a downer experience, like let's say you don't sell to all your friends and family. I've never been one who did a lot of sales to friends and family. It wasn't the way I like to do it. Um, and they just aren't, I don't know, I don't live in the same area as them. It's just not, my immediate family has never been where I've pulled from. Does that make sense? I always wanted to find those who needed my product. If it happened to be my friends or family, great. If it didn't, that's fine too but that's not where I get my bulk of my customers. But some people, that's where they're really comfortable starting. Okay. And a lot of people I know are different than I am. They would rather start with their friends and family and talk to a stranger. I would rather talk in front of, tw you know, 20,000 people that I don't know than 10 people I do know and ask them to buy a product. I want to know that they're buying it because they want it, not because it's a favor to me. 
So, but with that being said, um, that script that I sent you, it's very similar to finding a new customer script and you actually do ask yes, no questions at the beginning, which kind of goes against my philosophy, but sometimes I need somewhere to start. So if you notice that, like if you have some friends and family you haven't talked to yet or as you're bringing on new recruits, so Lindsay, like I know you have a couple of recruits right now, um, you can teach them this process and asking them a little bit, hey, tell me a little bit about is, you know, do you use skincare? Tell me a little bit about your thoughts on makeup. Like we can have some yes, no questions. Tell me what the biggest concern you have with regards to personal safety or your skincare. Hey, can I tell you a little bit about some stuff, invite you to something? But if you see those steps, it's gonna be really fun. The whole goal is that every new um, consultant, everybody who ever signs up with you, that you teach them that. So when you say make your list of 100 people you know, that you have a better way to talk to them and you need to explain to them, your excitement is not gonna be as high as the person that you just started talking to. You've gotta bring it down just a little bit. <laughs> you know, you've got to, you know, you gotta handle it a little differently. And being excited is one thing, but sometimes, you know, just flat out tell them. Being excited is one thing, but unfortunately, it can kind of come off like we're trying to convince them that they should care about the same thing we do, and it can come off a little bit pushy. Agreed? Right? With the best of intentions. That's the thing. You got to tell them, if you want people to see that you really believe in this product, then you've got to do it this way. If you're just excited and gung-ho and you and tell them, think about the last person who shared a product with you. Were you excited and gung-ho with them or were you kind of reserved? And they'll go, oh, yeah, <laughs> okay. They'll totally get it. They'll absolutely get it, but they need some different skills. So many people don't share any different skills with you on what to do instead, okay? So let me know if you have any questions about that. <clears throat> and what I want to do is talk to you a little bit, bit about how to be really systematic about networking and finding new customers, okay? And if you see, there's a form, hopefully you printed out. Um, I think it's called Finding New Customers Worksheet. I'm sure you have it printed, right, Lindsay? You love forms. There's a form. We sh there's a reason for a form. We should have that form, right? Do you see that? The one that I got from you is the friends and family sales. That was just that the one you sent last week. Two weeks ago, I sent you a whole list of oh. documents. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, sorry. Okay. I have that one. <laughs> so that worksheet, if you pull that worksheet out in front of you, that's what we're going to work on. I'm going to talk to you about the bottom of it first, and then we're going to go up to the top and talk about it. And we're going to connect your effort and make sure your effort is actually bringing you the results you want. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So a couple different areas that I gave you for finding new customers, um, and you may add something to this or change one of these or kind of define it a little bit different than I do. But what I want you to do is really figure out if the stuff that you're using for finding customers and networking if they are giving you the results that you want. And especially, I probably should have put a box, how much time did you spend doing this? But I want you to start figuring out where do you actually find your customers so that you're spending the most time there and you're doing it the most effectively possible. Sound good? Are you with me, Belinda? Okay. So the first box on the bottom of the page has groups. And what I mean by groups, no, it has nothing to do with Facebook, okay? Groups, I just mean face-to-face -face networking groups. So whether you have a women's group, a BNI group, you have, um, and it, you could even visit, just visit a BNI group one week. Um, all sorts of different things. Any type of women's group, like I belong to Seroptimist, um, your MOPS, that would be a group. Um, that would be one of your groups. Okay, Lindsay. And so groups of any sort. Okay. I want you 
to start recognizing when you meet a new customer, I want you to put their name and phone number in there. And then at the end, start like color coding them or something. I probably should have put one more column in here that says where did I find them in either activity one, two, or three, or four. But I want you to keep track of where you met those people, and I want you to put those numbers in those boxes, okay? So like on groups, on activity and date, you might put Tuesday at two o'clock is my MOPS group, and I met three potential new clients, okay? On, you know, Saturday, I went with a women's group and found two new clients potential clients okay now these are potentials these are people that you're going to get to talk about it they don't necessarily have to turn into customers um you know we're going to get some no's but potential leads that you can call on okay so you've talked to them about the business but you just haven't or you told them what really you do? sold to them you you have an agreement to follow up with them oh okay 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 gotcha so, okay, daily life. Okay, let's talk about that. So I know Lindsay's is extremely good at this. Going out, you know, being out at Target, being out, you know, wherever doctor's appointments, wherever she goes in life. Your daily life is one of those areas where you need to be opening your mouth and talking to people and getting to know people. And depending on how much time we have, we'll, we'll review the finding new customers but I, I'm happy to send that video to you for you to watch over and over. There's something amazing about repetition, okay? Um, I don't know, have I ever told you if there's a book that you like and you feel like there's material in it that really helps you or the activities or the things it says in there are things that you should try, I highly suggest you read the book three times in a row without reading anything else, okay? Read it three times in a row. The first time you read it, you find a couple ideas you want to apply. The second time you read it, you, well, no, the first time you read it, you just kind of get excited and you get a general idea and you start picking and choosing a couple ideas you might apply. The second time you choose the, the principles that you want to apply and get really good at. And then the third time you read it, you read it as um, kind of motivation to apply those things that you learned. Does that you see what I'm saying? Okay. And so, I mean, I know I have a gentleman that sells Avita coffee and boy, he watches, he decided he was going to get that finding new customers to watch it every day for an entire week until it started sinking in his brain. And because he does in his past life, he was a contractor and he was used to talking at people and they just had to do what he said they had to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> Him asking, different game. Yeah, him asking questions has been, it's been interesting to try to get him to learn it because he just asks very leading, well, you like, you drink coffee, don't you? Well, I happen to not drink coffee. I'm like, actually, I don't, you know? I mean, it was just, whereas, and when I got him to switch and say, tell me a little bit about your coffee drinking habits, holy cow, he came off so much more personable. I mean, can you feel how different those two questions are? You know, you drink coffee, don't you? And tell me a little bit about your coffee <laughs> drinking habits. I'm like, the, the difference between, quite frankly, a total not nice word to um, <laughs> someone who's personable and you would actually have a conversation with. I mean, he just, I didn't know how to tell him. I'm like, you aren't coming off nice. I mean, like, I get you know, people aren't going to want to talk to you this way. And I just fought and fought and fought to help him figure out these questions. But boy, he sounds so different. I'm sure he'll still have ups and downs and forget and remember and forget and remember, you know, that what he needs to do and it takes some practice. But it's those questions that make all the difference. Okay. So in your daily life, make sure you have a couple key questions that you can ask people. Hey, tell me a little bit about the skincare that you use. Tell me a little bit about, you know, your kids and yourself and where's the place that you feel safest in Tri-Cities, where are the places you go that you don't feel as safe and, you know, what would you like to do about it? Um, we have, this is my own. Good. You know, we I have. Rock. Uh, I rock. When no, I said, well, you rock. 
But I said, oh, those are good. I've been blocked, meaning oh, I can't. You've been blocked on what to ask? Yeah. yeah I, I joke that our, have you ever been to the Walmart at night up in Kennewick? No. Oh, my God. <laughs> the parking There's lot a- <laughs> is so dark. I jokingly call it Rape Mart because I'm just like, you could be raped here. I don't care if there's cameras out here. They wouldn't know who it was. I'm like, it's so dark in that parking lot. I hate it. It is. So yeah. I call it Rape Mart. I hate it. I would do anything not to go to that store on at night. Well, especially now the sun starts to set at like 4.30. I'm like, yeah, it won't be in any Walmart for another six months. <laughs> but I hate it. It's just, and it's not that I'm terribly scared, but I just, it's yucky. Anyway, just my little two. I feel the same. So, okay. So that's in your daily life. Okay, online. Now, Linda. Yes. I'm going to hold you accountable to how many people you actually find online. Okay. I know you've been curving your time, how much time you spend online. And I'm so proud of myself. I went 24 hours yesterday without being on Facebook at all. I was determined to take the day off. I didn't even turn my computer on. Of course, I have my phone, but I didn't even turn my computer oh, on yeah. until like six. Yeah, no, I didn't. I mean, because the Facebook app's on my phone, but I didn't. I, I was up to 30 notifications. And, wow. And, and I finally opened them, and there was only one that was even even remotely interesting or important. <laughs> I, was like, I mean, I've, I've Messenger. The messenger is, the message yeah. comes in differently. but Messenger. Yeah, 30 notifications, yeah. nothing important. I was like, oh my gosh, seriously. So, but I want you to really, the other thing I want you to keep track of on here is not just, I, I want you to be deliberate about the days and times you spend on there. I want you to calculate your hours, Glenda, so that you can see how much business you're doing based uh-huh. on how many hours. Because I know, believe, I have found so many customers lately online, so I'm not anti-online. I just want you to be really careful about spending time there and making sure you're like calling and following up and making contacts customers. Does that make sense? Okay. Because it's a high yes. to find a new contact and you can do that all day online, but you can like actually do that and then never turn them into customers. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Okay. So I just want you to do that. For I do. Sake. Okay. I have. To- I, yep. I will. I have some news to share with you guys, if you don't mind. Yeah, go. Let me finish number four, because I'm also okay. on this page, okay? But I totally want to hear it. Hang on a second. Okay, and then the last one, what did I write down there? Oh, two-hour phone calling session. So when I'm really deliberate about my two-hour phone calling session, I'm asking for referrals. Lindsay, I think you were on that call, weren't you? Didn't you hop on the... If I have a call, you're on it. You're so faithful. Um... So learning how to get referrals and finding new names that way is another powerful way to find contacts, okay? And one of the things that I'm realizing is that I can get almost just as much business by just simply getting referrals from people as some other things, and they're usually a little bit higher quality customer sometimes because the person's already kind of pre-qualified them for me. So anyway. But, okay, so I want you to start setting monthly goals for finding new contacts, setting a weekly goal, you know, breaking that goal down, figuring out how many new people you meet, and then where did you find them, and is that where you want to keep spending the same amount of time, okay? Work smart. That's my whole thing. Please work smart, okay? So share your good news, and then um, we'll do a brief review on finding new customers. Okay. Well, Karen just got a call from KNDU again. Uh They want to meet with her, and she's invited me to go with her. And that's what I'm doing right now is trying to get ready. (laughs) Oh, Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, they want to meet with her, and they want to do a possible – um, like expose or whatever you want to call it on damsel in defense and yeah like a whole se- uh, segment or something whatever you call it oh cool story. oh how fun yeah that's awesome what a good kickstart yeah so she invited me to go with her so we're supposed to meet right at 1 15 at uh we're supposed to meet at 1 15 so at pizza round table 
I guess that's what it's called. Yeah, anyway. So I'm excited. <laughs> Are you there? Yeah, I'm telling you. Okay. Okay. That I'm was it. So thrilled. Okay. So 115 for you, so really soon. Okay. Um, I know Lindsay, what time do you have to be up? You have to be up early too. She left. Okay. So you're gonna be on the news station or are you just meeting with them to discuss the logistics? Right now we're just meeting to discuss logistics um, and and see what see what they have to offer. Gotcha. You know, what's gonna happen. So um, yeah. So she's gonna interview Karen and Karen is uh, maybe me, I don't know. Cool. So Yeah. Yay. I'll give you more details as they come forth. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. I'm excited. Well, your head's not in the game right now. It wouldn't matter what I, I do. do. I'm listening to you. I'm listening to what you said. Um, no, I, no, 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 no. I don't take it personally. No. What I'm saying is like your energy and your, like, you're totally thinking about what you're going to talk to them about and you shouldn't be thinking about that. No, no, no. It's not something I, I like, it's what you're supposed to do. Well, I'm I'm th I'm listening to you too. No, I know. No, no, no I know. <laughs> I uh, I'm just excited about this this whole thing. Good. I'm you glad know? to find. You, I'm glad to finally see you excited. Yeah, it feels kind of weird. No kidding. <laughs> no, I know you've been kind of um. Wishy washy. No, no, no. Kind of um, wishy-washy isn't the word at all, but kind of um, um, lost. Sort of, yeah. But just like your heart, you just weren't. You were kind of. You had some walls up that, yeah, a lot of fear of failure, and a lot of yeah. um, not knowing what you wanted to do. Yeah, you are. You hit the nail on the head on that one. And that's just. But an now awful I just place feel. Pardon. That's just an awful place to be. Yeah. Now I feel. Um. Optimistic and hopeful. For not only the business aspect of it, but um, you know that it can educate and help women, and and there might just be somebody's life that you can change, you know? Right. And that's a, that's a terrific feeling. <laughs> okay, change the world, girl. Huh? Okay, change the world, girl. Oh, yeah, you know it. Me and my, I'm going to change the world. No. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't mean to break your eardrums with my singing. <laughs> Uh, is Lindsay still here or did she have to leave? I'm not sure. I know she was getting up early. I'm guessing she's dealing with boys, but I'm not really sure. Uh, what happened to Ron? Is she still on vacation? She had a situation with kids this afternoon. Oh. Oh. Cool. So, when you go, when you, uh, what am I going to say? Obviously, there's pointed questions that I'm going to need to ask somebody. Um, when it comes to friends and family, do you just kind of, do you treat them the same as you would a stranger, or do you just kind of go right into, you know, what you do? Okay, did you see that document? I did. I, I only looked at it briefly. I okay, so the document is all about doing the exact same thing carefully asking lots of questions to find out if they have any need for it. In my opinion, you have to be even more careful of family and friends than you do with strangers. So no, you absolutely yeah, can't I go into it. I know you said on there, you know, tell them that if it's not something that they need, it's okay and you save that relationship. Um, okay, yeah. No, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying, is that you've got to ask questions. I give you a way to do it. You don't necessarily have to, how to explain this? 
sometimes like if we're at the aisle in the grocery store, we sell food, we go, Hey, what are you making for dinner? And you can get into a conversation that way. Okay. Right. You, right. Don't, you don't need to be quite that calculating about it. You calculating is not the right word at all, but, but, but it is in a way, because I think that that, is exactly how I feel. So I think that's a great word, actually. Okay, but instead, the way I've worded it is is you first say, you know, you know what, I'm doing this new thing. It's not for everyone. Can I, you know, I'm just kind of curious what you do about, or how you feel about your personal safety. Can I ask okay. a couple questions? And so you really kind of are d diving into what you do right away, but you're approaching it in a way of, I want to ask you some questions to see if this is wor will work for you. Not if it will work for you, but if it is for them. Okay. Work My for you to are me. not very tactful right now, for sure. Yeah, work for you to me sounds like, what can I do to convince you to use this? Okay. Does that? Do you know what I mean? Where? Yeah. So more like if this is something that you would benefit from or yeah benefit need uh-huh interested okay. would even be interested in hearing more about because you know and just say because our relationship is important to me you know I, i'd love to share some of some of this with you because i am excited about it but if it's not your thing hey you know our friendship's more important than selling stuff but yeah if you need it it's a win-win so you want to ask Tell me, you know, I can't even ask yes, no questions. Um, <laughs> it's not in your nature. <laughs> no, not anymore. It used to be. It takes practice. But you ask a couple of basic questions, you know, tell me a little bit about how you feel your safety is in a parking lot. Tell me where you go that would be, see, I can't ask yes, no questions. Because when I was thinking about it, it was like, do you use skincare? Do you, you know, do you use makeup? Do you, you know, thinking about these different things? Do you do this? Do you do that? Tell me, you know, and then one open-ended question that just tell me what your biggest concern is when you're cooking. Tell me about your biggest concern when it comes to personal safety. Tell me your biggest concern. Uh -huh. you, hey, can I tell you, you know, can I invite you to this or show you a little bit about this? And if they say no, the other problem that most of them have is they don't know how to, what's the word I'm looking for? They don't know how to take the conversation and go back to something normal. They feel like there's this awkward, now what do I do kind of feeling. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can totally see that in me. Right. Well, then all you have to do is just say, hey, I understand. You just say, you know, I understand. No problem. You know, that's okay. This isn't for you. And then mm -hmm. ask them about something you normally talk about. Job, kids church, holidays, like go to a normal, safe, common subject and just go to that. And then they're like, oh, so we're totally just the same as we always were. Absolutely. You know, okay. go back to something normal. Say, I understand. Hey, if you ever, you know, if you come to a situation where you want to know something more about this, just know I'm here for you. Say, right. hey, how's it going with your new job? Or sometimes you plant that seed and they start thinking about it, even though they may say no at the first. And then they start thinking about it and going, well, maybe, yeah, you know. You know, you know what I mean? Yes. Yep. Oh, my gosh, Belinda, I just got a copy of my workbook for sales. Yeah. So cool. It looks like I actually know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was, when I was looking at that, I thought that is an awesome, an awesome idea. You yeah. know, so give something people right in, you know, in their hand right then and there. And Yep. They're going to have to pay a $25 registration fee to get the book. Well, that covers your cost. So I would hope at least. Yeah, no, it will. Yeah. Cool. The 28 pages and I know it's not all in there yet. Cool. And then there'll be like 12 trackers and there'll be calendars and there'll be everything you need. It's going to be That's awesome. wonderful. Yeah. It is pretty wonderful. Okay. Well, you know, if you don't mind, I got to run down to Brittany's and yeah. get the junk in the trunk. She wants me to bring the junk in the trunk. Whoop. Sorry. You still there?
Yep. Okay. Um, 